the snow finally melted this winter, the flotsam that was left in the backyard included half of a styrofoam cup propped next to the bird bath and something that looked like crumpled pink paper lying on the brick patio. On closer inspection, the paper was actually a pair of pink thong cotton panties next to two butane cigarette lighters, one yellow and one red, and a pair of black rim prescription glasses. The items were arranged in an oddly artful way. Initially, I thought they would make a bizarre still life having just completed a watercolor workshop the previous weekend. <laughs> Perhaps I have adjusted to living in the city and have learned to accept that I may find unexpected things and people in our yard. There was lasagna man when we were renovating our two-family house before we moved in. Then there was the morning that Steve was to make a trip, leaving me for the very first time in the house alone for a week. That morning, when I came out of the back door to go to work, I was horrified to find three homeless men sleeping in the backyard next to my blooming gardens. Before I could even get Steve to come out and talk to them, they had disappeared like a bad dream. They didn't leave one thing behind, nothing like the tableau I found when the snow melted. How long had those things been there, I wondered? Was it the site of some wintry tryst? Or something criminal. Should I call the police? Was this evidence? Evidence of what? <laughs> Honey, there's something disturbing out in the backyard, I called to Steve when I returned from my patio inspection. After hearing my alarm description of the item, Steve responded in his typically nonchalant approach to the perils of living in the city. Oh, I don't think anything happened out there. Some kids were probably hanging out and just left some random stuff behind by accident. What about those pink panties, I reminded him. Why would anyone leave those? I think something went on more out there than just smoking cigarettes or weed. Don't you remember Lasagna Man, Steve responded. You were freaked out about him, too. But that turned out to be harmless when we figured it all out. I smiled as I recalled the mystery of Lasagna Man and the special calling cards he left behind. We became acquainted with Lasagna Man a few months after we bought our 1920s two-family house located a few blocks from Harvard Square. For the previous five years, we were carefree renters of a cute but small Victorian attic apartment located on the next block. Steve went to open houses every Sunday, determined we would find a house to buy in the eclectic and increasingly upscale neighborhood we had grown to love. When our house appeared on the market, we made an offer the day after the first open house. The house needed a lot of work and had been vacant for several months. The original owner died nearly a year before, and while the air squabbled, the housing market had declined, bringing the price down to a point we could afford. Finding a place with parking, a fireplace, backyard, and bigger closets answered everything on our wish list. It even had a separate garage that theoretically could fit two cars, as long as they were as, as small as the ones built in the 1920s. <laughs> Steve hired a patchwork crew of friends to work with him on the renovations that started in the late winter. They had nearly finished the rudimentary improvements we needed to be able to move into the second floor unit in the late spring when our lease was up. Hey, did you leave a pair of shoes in the garage? Steve asked DJ, a friend who needed a job and was living in the house during a renovation project. No, I didn't think there was anything in the garage. What kind of shoes are they anyway? When Steve and DJ went out to the garage to find the shoes, they were gone. In their place with a neatly folded herringbone tweed sports jacket. That's funny. <clears throat> there was a pair of brown leather shoes perfectly lined up next to the door, Steve explained. Someone seems to be using the garage as a closet. <laughs> Could you keep an eye out, DJ? <coughs> Let's see if we can spot who it is. For the next few days, DJ, a former creative director at an advertising agency in Manhattan, relished the task of finding out who might be hanging out in the garage. He reported back to Steve that the shoes were left some days and the jacket was left other days. Showing off his detective skills, DJ pointed out that the shoes, though scuffed up, were wingtips, and the jacket had arm catches, but it was finally made. By this time, the entire crew was fully engaged in trying to solve the mystery. DJ tried to catch our visitor coming and going, but was fast asleep by the time the elusive visitor arrived in the middle of the night. 
and apparently he left at the crack of dawn, or at least earlier than DJ was able to rouse himself each morning. For a week, coffee breaks and lunch hours were dedicated to developing a personality profile and imagined physical description of our visitor. The creative juices of a social worker, an environmental engineer, and sculptor, along with DJ, cooked up a fascinating and sometimes scary range of possibilities to explain the background of this fastidious character occupying our vacant garage. And then one day, a large pan of lasagna was left neatly wrapped in a little <laughs> hole next to the door, along with the shoes and the jacket. <laughs> That's it, Steve said, told the crew. It looks like this guy is getting ready to move in with even more stuff. Since I was the only one who didn't know about our visitor, now the lasagna man by the crew, Steve decided it was time to fill me in. What are you going to do about him, I asked. I wouldn't want to lock him out of the garage and get him mad at us. What if he is off a little? We're going to be moving in pretty soon, and I'd rather not share the place with anyone quite yet. A couple of days later, Steve announced that the shoes, jacket, and lasagna pan had all disappeared. How did you do it? I just left him a note, he said in his calm, matter-of-fact way. We're the new owners. We're moving in. You have to move out. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that was enough? He won't be back? But it was enough. We never saw a pair of shoes, clothes, or pants of lasagna in the garage after that. A few weeks later, Steve and I were in Harvard Square when I noticed a man with a herring bone tweed jacket <laughs> and brown wingtip shoes walking towards us. Honey, look, I whispered excitedly. Do you think that could be lasagna man? He was a distinguished looking middle-aged man with salt and pepper hair and a well-trimmed mustache walking slowly down the sidewalk peacefully absorbed in the open book in his hands, oblivious to passers-by. Though his clothes were somewhat rumpled, he was not far from the quintessential look of an absent-minded professor making his way to his next class. This was the first of many sightings of Lasagna Man that spring and the next. He was a solitary figure who spent much of his time walking around Harvard Square and sometimes passing the time seated on a park bench. We reported to each other the various times we saw him and what he was doing like an old but remote acquaintance we'd like to know better. We imagined that he was a former Harvard professor, professor fallen from grace in the cutthroat world of academia, or a luckless graduate drawn back to the surroundings of his youth, youth for solace or inspiration. One day, when Steve and I were together on one of our walks to the square, we saw him carrying his lasagna pan <laughs> with a couple of books perched precariously on top. <laughs> we looked at each other, smiled, and thought out loud. I wonder where he'll leave it tonight. <laughs>